Um, so, a key thing about all scripts in Unity that are not third-party plugins, so every script that you will write that is applied to an object within Unity will derive from this thing called mono behavior. So this is the base class of every script. And it's got a very nice documentation here. That shows you all of these functions that are available to you immediately to use. So, for instance, it has a function called update. Update is called once per frame. It has a function called start, which is run once at the beginning. It has a function called await, which is run before the start function, like at the very, very beginning. It has a late update, which is run after update. So this is what I think, I hope, is, was causing the teapot uh, to not rotate properly. Because I probably think that both of my functions were, um, so my, my follow function, which caused the teapot to rotate, and my fix rotation function were both being called in the late update um, uh, function call. And my uh, smooth follow function happened to be called after my fix rotate function. So my fix rotate was was caused to be was was causing was caused to be over overwritten by the um, by the smooth follow. You can change the order of, uh, that scripts execute, um, and I'll I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Uh, but let's just follow the rest of the functions here. So we've got some quite important things. The most important ones I've actually written here. So start, these ones in bold are probably the very most important ones. Start, update, on collision, enter, on GUI. Those are probably the four ones that you're going to use the most. On GUI uh, executes the Unity GUI layer. So anything to do with Unity uh, user interface stuff must be called within on GUI. On collision enter is for uh, obviously when a collision occurs. So you, if two objects collide, you can track the collision and get what, what the other object collided with and then perform some function with those. Update is called once per frame. Late update is called after update. Fixed update is called within the physics loop. Physics loop uh, runs faster than the graphics rendering loop and um, is important for things like if you have uh, falling objects uh, based on gravity uh, because you don't want objects to fall through. There's a common problem in real-time game engines where um, the physics loop, the, the, the rendering loop is, run, is running at a slower rate than the physics loop. And so there are times when the renderer draws a falling object through uh, um, through a, uh, a thin physics material. Um, and that's because the render loop draws here, and then the next time it's called, um, the, the object has actually fallen through the physics object. By using the physics loop instead to do your collision detection, then we can trap, then we can trap those, even if we're, we're running at a slower frame rate than would be kind of logically um, used to check those collisions. On pre-render is the very final thing that happens before the render. So if, 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 for instance, you're running a VR system and you want the very, very latest head tracking data, put that in the on pre-render loop. Don't put that in the update loop because, that, because update is just run once per frame at some point. Um, if you put it on pre-render, you know that that's going to be the very, very final uh, um, time before uh, the image actually gets rendered, the current frame actually gets rendered. You do have control about script execution order. Um, so if we go into edit project settings and script execution order, we can define uh, relative times when we want scripts to run. So just as an experiment, let's see if this works. So if we just press plus, 
and we can add um, add some uh, a rule about script execution. If I put my fix rotation at 100, the, uh, again these are just relative. They, these aren't real. This isn't real time. And I put my smooth look at at 10 or 50, then smooth look at should now be executed before my fix rotation function. So therefore that should fix uh, the problem that we're having. Let's see if that's really, yeah. You can use, yeah, I could use five and 10, yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's see if that's fixed it. Yep. Okay, so it was because we weren't sure about the order of script execution. With the script execution rules that we've defined here, we are now certain that we will always run fix rotation after the smooth look at. It could, I, I'm not sure how, one of the possible disadvantages of Unity is that you can't get right down to the render loop. You can't get right down to you know, the very, very core of what's happening. Um, and so they provide you with functionality to get approximately to that core, but um, you can't get you know really right right down to it. So this is a good way of um, you know, making your execution a bit more controlled, a bit more uh, less unknown. If I didn't have this, then it would possibly be random what happened. So it would either be random every time I played my every time I ran my application, or it may even be random every frame, um, depending on how Unity works, which we which we can't get right down, as I say, can't get right down there. So that makes sense. does everything make sense so far? Yeah. The question to the writing a script inside of C sharp, um, let's say that it's on the actual processor there and you wanted to step into or to okay. walk through. Is that possible? Uh, right. Um, okay. Let's let's make a bug. Let's just um, Okay, this is this is a kind of a weird bug. This is a C sharp thing. So if I press, if I were to, create a float um, value here, and just save that, and then come back to Unity. I don't know if it still does this. Okay, yeah. So this is a there's an error there now. So this is just demonstrating a very obscure C sharp. Well, it's not very obscure actually. Um, this is demonstrating in C-sharp that it's quite picky. You have to stick an F on the end there. And it's also demonstrating a Unity error. So let's not put an F there. Um, so as soon as an error occurs in one of your compiled scripts, it kicks up this um, stuff in the, in the console. So... It doesn't it, get the command though because the error is from the compiler. Right? Yeah. With... Yeah, I'm just thinking. Step by step, so maybe it may just be a variable that never gets checked or something like that. There are ways of doing it. I've never done it. There's, there's one that I remember we found on Hazelot. Yeah. Um, I don't know why it didn't work in Unity 4, because it used to work. You see everything in Unity 3. And I think that there is a, um, uh, a PDF store you can download files from Pretty Body and yeah, cost four hundred pounds. Yeah, yeah. That, so another thing about editors. So there's this one that Unity comes with called Mono Develop, and it's really all you need. And it does have very nice um, highlighting, as you see. That's what run, that's what runs as default. You can also use Visual Studio on Windows, um, or any editor you like. External tools, and then it will detect if you have Visual Studio installed, or you can browse for an executable. So if I wanted Visual Studio 2010, and then did the same thing, so if I, if I just double clicked on that error, it's now gonna open Visual Studio. Um, there's no, the IntelliSense is the same between both, and the, com the comment highlighting doesn't exist in Visual Studio, I don't think. Um, but in MonoDevelop, it's got nice text highlighting. So I, I usually use MonoDevelop. 
Um, there's a studio also takes ages to load them. All right. So this is uh, okay. Okay, it doesn't have quite as nice text highlighting. Let's see. We've got the, ni the nice pink values here. So if you're an enthusiast about text highlighting, then uh <laughs> okay. But let's let's forget about this. So in, so it doesn't matter what what we edit it in. Um, so if I had to fix that error uh, and save it, and then Unity, look when I press into Unity, look in look in the bottom right corner there, and you'll see a little kind of icon. That means that it's compiling. If you're compiling a big script, that'll take a good few seconds to do. So just um, if you're compiling a large script and then just want to come to Unity and hit play immediately, Unity will just look like it's doing nothing for maybe a few seconds, and then once that load is finished, then it'll then it'll uh, kick in again. So the error is gone. Um, I'll get back. To, I'll, I'll have a look at that, at that debugging question. Um, see if there's an easy way of doing it. But I think that's a common complaint in Unity that it is not super easy to debug things. The best thing about it, though, is that it naturally. Well, w one of the very nice things I think about Unity is that it kind of naturally encourages you to use uh, lots and lots of small scripts. So it kind of encourages. Um, encourages discrete and simple scripting. Obviously, you can't do that all the time, but um, it does certainly encourage you to do that. So, for instance, I've got a, I've just split up the rotation, the look at rotation, and the fix rotation. As opposed, I, I could have put it all in one, but um, if there was an error, then I'd have to debug, uh, go through more code. Is this all making sense so far?